Hi, Mystery Writers. Welcome to Write a Killer Mystery. I'm Zara Altair, author and mystery writing coach. And today we're going to talk about being on target to engage your loyal readers. This is especially important for new mystery writers. First, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon who support this series and support my writing and if you'd like to support this ongoing series um, there's a link in the description below okay so let's talk about finding our loyal readers and the first thing you need to know is not everyone is your target reader and this is especially true for mystery writers we want mystery lovers to read our books because other people may not be interested there's no point in trying to get those people all right um and then your reader is not only someone who loves mysteries but they love your subgenre so you might write a traditional mystery that appeals to lovers of Agatha Christie and others, or you may have a hint of supernatural for your law enforcement officer, like Ben Aronovich. Uh, they're, they're just different ways, and the people who love that subgenre are your target readers. Don't worry about the others. There's plenty of readers out there. So that is not the problem, is there aren't enough readers. There are. Uh, so you want to attract those readers who like the type of story that you write. So whatever your subgenre, you want your novel to appeal to that audience. The audience that appreciates the kind of story that you write. And this is what makes your novel on target. Uh, many writers who sell their books in the mystery genre believe they know their readers and you want to know your readers too. So the first thing is write your story first. The best way to find readers who become fans is to write the story you want to write. It seems self-evident, but some writers try to write to market without passion and it doesn't work and it doesn't work for two reasons first it's hard to work on a novel lo novel length project without passion it, it's long novels are long they're hard work um storytelling is hard and it takes passion to keep you going when you get to those rough spots so um that's one thing and the second reason is your readers can tell the difference. They really can. Um, it, it's going to feel to them like they're reading a paint-by-numbers story. And you won't have the depth and the passion and the detail that appeals to the readers. Um, so, unless you're a very skilled writer, stay away from writing to market and Focus on writing the type of mystery that you want to write in the subgenre that you like to read and that in which you like to tell stories. All right. Um, you've probably read mysteries. That's probably what got you enthusiastic about writing them. So just stay with that. Okay. And then who is your ideal reader? Um, Never forget why you're writing the book. Your readers will care about what you are writing, but it's your book's story and potential reader benefits they will truly love. And the benefits of reading a mystery uh, are engaging characters and a mystery, a puzzle they want to solve along with your detective. Those two benefits, the story and the detective, oh, it's really three, the story, the detective, and the mystery, 
are your marketing gold. Those are the goals for reaching the readers who will like your story. Okay? No one knows your mystery novel better than you do. So when you start marketing, think of readers who will like your book. That way you're going to write, that way you're going to market to the right readers, the readers who will love your book. And marketing is a process. It's hard enough to persuade people to buy your book, and it's even harder when you market it to the wrong people, to the wrong audience. So in the best way to start is to focus on tactics that reach the right readers with the right message at the right time. <laughs> uh, so you'll spend less money and time and sell more books. So first of all, your strongest, biggest, first impression marketing tool is your book cover. Um, it's the first way most readers know about your book they either see it in a bookstore or they see it that cover on an online retailer and online they click on the cover to read more about the book but the first thing they see is that book cover so a dark noir cover feels very different from a cozy mystery um, what you want is you want your cover to feel like your story. I want to say that again. You want your cover to feel like your story. It's like the first promise that you give them is this emotional image of your story that says, this is what it's going to feel like when you read this book. Okay? So, a historical mystery has a sense of the time period as well as the mystery. And if you're on a limited budget, this is the place to spurge. This, it is the first thing readers see. It's the first way they learn about your book. So it's so important to have a great cover and a cover that feels like your book. So find a professional cover designer. This is someone who understands design, they understand typography, and they also understand what's going on in book marketing and what's going on with covers in book marketing so they can help you create the feel of your story through the design process um, they know the trends for your particular subgenre and then just a cautionary tale just because someone is a graphic designer does not mean they are a great book cover designer they need all those skills it, Book cover design is a specialized skill because they need to know not just graphic design elements and not just typography elements, but they need to know what goes with your genre and your subgenre. It's a very specialized skill, and your book will benefit from everything that you invest in your cover. The money spent helps your target reader know your book is just the kind of book they like to read okay and second of all is your book description or sometimes called the blurb and it, it's what goes on the back cover of a print book and what goes in the description for a digital ebook so it's the text that invites the reader to read this story and so it does the same thing as the cover. It, it feels like your story. If your story is snarky, then your description is going to have a bit of snark in it. All right? If your story is dark, it's going to feel dark. If you're cozy, if you're 
if you're writing a cozy mystery, there's going to be that mystery element, but it's going to be light. So it's the same thing. What you're doing is you're appealing to the emotions of your target reader. So if the book description doesn't fit the story, it won't attract the right readers. Um, and what's more, the people who read the description and then get into the book and the book description and the, and the feeling of the book description and the feeling of the book don't match, those people are going to be disappointed and that can cause you a second layer of trouble, which is um, they won't read the book they can leave bad reviews uh, because they're disappointed so you don't want that to happen it's really important to have your blurb match the feel of, of the story so I want to tell a little story here I actually hired um, a book description person to write a blurb for a book and they asked a lot of questions and I answered all those questions and they would send me a description and I'd say, no, that's not it. It's a little bit of that or whatever. And finally, they sent me a final. But the problem was that they were very gifted at leading, at, at leading the reader through the steps of a book description. And we'll get to those in a minute. But they were creating a feeling that didn't match the feeling of the story. So in the end, I had to rewrite some sentences in order for the feeling to match the story it's it's just really important otherwise you're going to have disappointed readers it's going to feel like a tease and they're not going to be happy all right so let's look at what what is briefly we're going to look at what is in a book verb um first there's a hook uh it's about two sentences that introduces your detective and and what the dilemma is in this story and then you want to give the reader a clear idea of the kind of book you want to make tell them for sure that it's a mystery and if it's historical you want to give them a sense of the period of time and and then you want to tell develop what the problems are that face your detective protagonist and then at the end, you want to leave some kind of cliffhanger that intrigues the reader and gets them to want to know more about your story. So, for example, can the detective ferret out the killer in the face of corruption? It hints at the payoff for the reader. This is the, the blurb is all about the setup, okay? And then something really important, this is especially important, well, it's important for everyone, but it's something that a lot of new authors don't do because they're kind of shy. But the very last thing in your book description, especially for online retailers, is what's called a call to action. And that is um, a direct telling them to buy the book. That simple, okay? So, if here's an example. If you love World War II settings and intrigue, you'll love name of your book title. Buy it now. That's the call to action. To discover the missing clue. Okay? So, those are the four, the four parts of, of a good blurb. And you'll find plenty online. But I just... It's so important to have the feel of your cover and the feel of your book description match your story because it's going to have the same emotional appeal for your target readers as your book does. And that's the whole idea is that emotional appeal. They're going to go, oh, I love reading a book like this. I read hundreds, you know mystery readers can be big fans so and you want them to be your fans so give them a chance to become your fans all right uh you're going to connect your ideal reader to your story and if you write a good story and have your cover and have a strong uh, book description that mirror the feel of your book 
you're well on your way to finding your target readers. Okay, that's it for today, and I hope that helps. And if you like this, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little notification bell um, so you won't miss another episode of Write a Killer Mystery. I'm here every week with tips for mystery authors, and if you really want to get into it, there's a link to the course, Write a Killer Mystery. There's a link to the course in the description below. All right, see you next time.